part four X Cub today. Continuing on the X Cub, we are going to be doing uh, radio equipment and uh, basically the push rods and the pull pull set up for the uh, for the rudder. So let's go show you kind of what we got going on today. So we got the plane upside down here on the bench. You're going to pull off the uh, radio tray, the cover, and you can see we kind of got some stuff already ahead done ahead. This is our setup for our radio. We went over this. We have a little sub video we just did. Uh, we have dual batteries and dual receivers going on. And then this is a little channel expander, four channel expander. So basically we have 12 channels going on. Uh, I'm not gonna go over it right now because it's kind of in depth. We did a proof of concept um, video of it all laid out on the bench. Uh, basically what we got going on here, this is a just real quick description of what this is. Uh, FR Sky redundancy bus, which controls receiver one and then receiver two is going to be mounted way back in the tail boom this is an xm plus and then our channel expander and then the two battery leads are down they're hanging down here now so we've got twin batteries too so basically if we have a receiver failure we're good to go and if we have a battery failure we're good to go we have redundancy of both so anyway this was a lot of off-camera stuff of just laying stuff out get velcro gluing antennas in and whatnot so we saved you the boring part what we got to do here is we're going to mount the servos here. So we got the two elevator ones on the outside and then the rudder ones in the middle. So let's grab our, our first elevator. And you can see we've already kind of tested this. It just needs a little filing right there. I could force it in, but I'm not, I'm not going to. So we got to file a little bit off, more like just round these corners off. Uh, what we have to do is just run the screw, run the servo screws through these pre-drilled holes from the factory and then reinforce them with CA. Okay. All right, let's screw our screws in. Time to reinforce the threads with some CA. Mary's going to hold some, the paper towel from underneath and just use thin CA to reinforce the threads we just made. Couple drops knees, there you go. Okay, so while the CA is drying in those threads that Mary just uh, dripped in, we're gonna uh, show you what's going on with the servo arms and the clevises they got going on for this. So for the rudder, which is the middle servo, it goes with a pull-pull cable system. So you need the 180 degree arm. So it's gonna pull-pull. Now we, you gotta find the arm that works where from the center of the spline to one of the holes is 16 millimeters. And you can see I've already drilled it out to three millimeters, so on either side. So a three millimeter hole, 16 millimeters out on both sides. So that's the rudder. And then the elevator, same thing, 16 millimeters out, drill a three millimeter hole. So we got those already drilled up, they're looking good. Now, the rudder uses the pull-pull setup, so you're gonna have to dig out some more of these ball ends and then these brass, kind of clevis looking things. And uh, what we're gonna do, we did three off camera, because they're kind of a pain, and we'll show you what we gotta do. So you gotta take one of them, and they start really, really hard. I don't know why it's so hard to start, but I did this one, I started it. So you get it in there, you gotta really push hard to get it going. If you do need to start it with a little tap, it's a, uh, just an M3 tap with a, I think it was a 0.5 thread pitch, it's a very fine thread pitch, and I think that's why it's so hard to start. Okay, so you get it in there, and then they want eight turns. So I'm using just an Allen key, and we're gonna go eight turns in. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight okay so what that does is it puts them all kind of at the same starting point and it leaves you a lot of thread to tighten in because remember there's gonna be cables on here so you want some uh some adjustment room to tighten up the cables so they got plenty uh, of adjustment left so we got those prepped now we're gonna put two on our rudder control horn so we're gonna put them on and we're gonna use Two M3 by 10s, two 
washers, M3 washers, and two M3 lock nuts, okay? So we'll do one side at a time. So the washer goes on the top, put it through your ball end, put it on the top of your servo arm, and then the nut, start him on the bottom. Small fiddly stuff. Tighten this up. Let's do the other one. There we go. So you can see it'll be kind of pull pull like that. Looks good. These two other ones, these will go on the actual rudder control surface itself on the back of the plane. So we don't put these on yet. Some wiring starting to come together here. Get a little crazy. All right, so the CA is probably dry by now. So let's work on the rudder. Let's get that in. Channel four is my rudder. And we have our grommets and the brass eyelets. Remember, brass eyelets from the bottom so that the actual brass rests on the wood, okay? We made the threads and reinforced the CA. So we'll just kind of put those in there. All right, so rudder servo's installed. Let's find that rudder wire, the servo lead. We're gonna bring him up through this hole in the floor on this side. Channel four. The rudder only uses one servo, so pretty easy. So now we need to power this up real quick and let's center this uh, servo. Our servo arm, it is neutral, looking good. So we get that in there. There we go. Cool, looking good. Perfect. What is next, Mary? Pull, pull. <laughs> pull, pull. So we run some cables. So we're gonna run uh, the cable loop through here and squeeze the clamp. All right, so we're gonna feed the wire in through the back. I think it's gonna be the easier way. That's what the directions say. I thought it would be easier going this way, but apparently not. All right, so we got our wire through. We are, get, grab one of your barrel crimper connectors, slide it on first. We're gonna run it through, obviously the side that we're working on, so the one closer here. The other end is gonna go through the other side of the barrel connector. Sorry, my hands are in the way, but this is pretty fiddly stuff. And just take up the slack pushing it down the fuselage to the other end. Okay, it's looking pretty good. And we have plenty of slack down at that end. All right, so now we're gonna crimp the barrel. I actually just used some side cutters. It gives it a nice sharp kind of crimp. You know, don't cut so, or don't squeeze so hard that it cuts through it, but just crimps it real nice. There we go. Looking good. So now we'll cut off this little bit of, this little pigtail here, because we don't really need him. I'll leave about a half an inch on there. There we go. All right, let's get the other wire run through. So Mary's gonna push it through that end again. Okay. Hey. Oh, okay. You got it. it. Um, tape? <laughs> so well, let's get another barrel connector. So you put the crimper on first, run it through your brass, run it through the other end of the barrel, and we'll give it a crimp. All right, so we're at the back of the airplane now. We're gonna hook up the, the wires to the actual rudder. So the way the plane is built is the horns are a bigger gap 
than the ball. So what happens is if you tighten the bolt, it squeezes the horns and you could break them. So I don't want to do that. So I'm putting a, basically a washer on either side of the ball to take up the gap or at least most of it. You can see the ball end is skinnier than the gap of the control horns. So you put two washers in there and now when you tighten it up, it's not going to squeeze it's not going to squeeze the two uh, you know control horns to where they could potentially break or just put weird pressure on them. So, that works like that. Looking good. So now we got our lock nut, M3 lock nut. Let's put this on. So we can do the other one real quick while we're here dealing with this. So same thing. All right, so we got both ends. It's time to hook this up. So we have the radio system on because when we tighten this up, we want you know tension up there so we don't inact inadvertently pull the wires. So let's uh, basically the same thing here. Let's do one at a time. We'll do this side first because Mary's over here. So I am gonna go up. All right, everybody, so we have them both kind of in place there. All right, so we're gonna put a piece of tape down here holding the rudder, you know, flush with the fin. There we go. So now the rudder is kind of well held in place. And then the, up there, the servo is held in place by the radio. Let's tighten these up and see if we can get it uh, a nice taut pull pull system. So we've got just uh, small pliers with the teeth and we're putting it, mate, mating it up with the teeth on here. Actually locks in really nice. They're both the, pretty much the same tension now. So I like that. So let's give it a quick test. So let's uh, untape the rudder. Looks like it works to me. Hi, Rach. So we haven't set our, our rates or anything yet, but you can see that's a lot of rudder. All right, I call that a success. For So for now, I think we're done with the rudder. I might tweak the tension on those cables a little bit, uh, a little more later on, but for now it looks really good to me. So we're gonna move on. Time for the uh, elevator push rods. All right, so on to the two elevator servos now. So we're gonna install the the, the side closest to Mary first here. So um, putting the lead through. This one I have chosen channel two for this elevator side. Okay, looks good. So here's our two elevator push rods. You can see we've, we've put the uh, one end only one end has the ball ends, so we're gonna attach that to the servo arm. And they have you thread them on eight turns, so you can see the shadow in there. It's almost about halfway. So it gives you some adjustment both ways. Okay, so let's put these on. M3 by 12, an M3 washer, goes onto the ball, through the servo hole that we've pre-prepped, start him. All right, let's tighten this up. <laughs> All right, you guys, so we got them both on there. So remember, one of these rods, they face, they oppose each other, so they're gonna look like that when they're in the airplane. So looking good. All right, let's slide them through. All right, so I'm gonna start feeding them through. I'll go on Mary's side here first. <laughs> yeah, I forgot the tubes crisscrossing the fuselage, so we were expecting it to come out over here. Oh, so we're both looking over here <laughs> when, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. So it goes in that tube right there. Yeah. Okay. There, there we go. go. All right, nice. so yeah, those will clip onto the servos, perfect. 
Okay, so this is where we're gonna have to turn on the radio system. And like I said, we kind of centered these before, so they're very, very close. We just wanna make sure we're clipping them on correctly. Um, so let's, again, once again, power up the radio. So you can see everything's, you know, 90 degrees perpendicular with itself. That's how you always wanna start off your servos, you know, just any model in general. Let's screw those down. All right, so everything's secure up here. Um, all the ball ends are looking good. Let's move to the back of the plane and get that installed. All right, everybody, so we're at the back of the plane now, and you have to thread the elevator control rod through without these on. A quick tip, do this ahead of time when these rods are out, because these are a pain in the butt. They do not want to thread on. They are very difficult. So I actually have to put this rod in my vise and just wrench on it to get these in. So we've pre-done it and threaded them. You can see there's some pre-built threads in there that, uh, that we did off, you know, off the plane. It would have been an absolute, probably impossible to do this on the plane right here. Let's thread these on, because you can see how tight this is. That's dang close. I'm gonna try that. Okay. Let's let's get a let's get a uh, just thread one in. Yeah, let's just see where we're at here. And we're gonna need to do that washer trick on this side. On the in the middle there. Woo! I think that might be it. Okay, so that's in. I'm happy with that. Okay. Okay, so the length of the rod is good. Let's just double check up here. The, you know, the radio system is powered up. Yeah, we're still good. All right, so we're gonna go with that. Let's uh, get this all hooked up. All right, everybody, so we got our five and a half open end and our two and a half driver. Okay, so that side's done. Let's do the same exact thing over here. So we got that all hooked up. We got both elevators looking good. Let's uh, let's try an elevator test here. And remember, the elevators are on separate channels. So if one of them goes up a little more than another, we can set endpoints to make them even. You know, so we might have to fiddle with some endpoints to get them to go even. But let's try it out. Yeah, see so they're backwards. <laughs> <laughs> they're like ailerons right now. <laughs> so let's fix that. So which one is going the wrong way? So that. That one's correct, that one's wrong. So that crisscrosses over here, so that's channel six, we have to reverse. So let's do that real quick. Go to outputs, uh, scroll down to channel six, reverse. They look to be about the same. It's very hard to get two different servos literally exact, but they look dang near you know, they're close enough, especially for a cub. We're not doing any precision pattern flying, but I'm happy with it. All right, everybody, on to the really cool part, the tail wheel. So we pulled the tail wheel and all the hardware out of the bag. I mean, look, we showed this in the unboxing, but I mean, just look how beautiful this thing is. This is a really nicely machined piece. This thing's this is amazing. It's got actual leaf springs, very high quality piece. But um, we're gonna do a couple of these steps out of order. So we're gonna set that aside, we're gonna get right to that. But the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drill these holes and put some CA in here for the uh, tiller arm because we're gonna let the glue dry while we're doing a bunch of other stuff. Now, I mentioned this in the carbon cup video. This is a straight piece of metal out of the bag and you're trying to attach it to a curved rudder. So what I suggest is go kind of, just take your time and curve it to the shape of the rudder. So you can see it fits perfect now. So just kind of do it, you know, on the bench or whatever. It's very soft metal, very easy to shape, but now you can see it fits perfect. So the directions here, we're gonna take the arm and you mount it, well, just hold it, right the leading edge of that with the leading edge of the hinge. And you're just gonna make two, marks okay then we're going to drill 5 fourths pilot hole we already have our 5 fourths drill bit in 
So we'll go straight down. Now you don't need to go too far. So we'll go about half that drill bit. Really, you know, soft wood. All right, so while the CA is drying on the tiller arm uh, back there, we're gonna take the axle out and, get, and put the actual wheel on. Okay, so that's pretty easy. That's on there. Next thing, uh, just double check these hardware. That looks good. They got poly, they got lock nuts on there, so that's good. And then the main one holding the pack together, that's all tight too, I checked all that. All right, so our holes, the CA, the CA has dried. Just like that, all right. But we can continue putting it together. All right, let's get. He goes there and those go in there. But the way this comes out of the bag, you got these two nuts on there holding the spring pack together. And we have checked the blind nuts in there. They are correct, they do work. We don't need a, a tap. So let's get these two little nuts off. So nothing crazy. You can see the spring pack did open up a little bit, but that's easy to tighten back up. Um, now we do have to put some Loctite thread lock. So blue. A little too much, huh? Let's get these both started loosely here. Looking good, looking like it's going in. Okay, looks good. And last, all we have left is the springs. Let's do it. Let me grab the springs. These look like pretty good springs out of the bag. So the carbon cub, you had to kind of pre-bend or you had to do the pigtails yourself. These look like a little different version. So we're gonna put them on here. Here they go right here from the wheel to the tiller arm. So this is gonna be interesting. These are always really tricky to do. If you use a pair of pliers, they'll probably be a lot easier. All right, there's one that went pretty good. Let's put it down here first, maybe, and pull it up to us. There. Very nice. Okay. There we go. Nice. Let's uh, power up the radio and give it a quick test. All right, everybody, so we got uh, basically the elevator and the rudder all hooked up. You can see it all works great. Tailwheel, really nice. So we're really happy with the way that came out. Really the last thing we got to do back here is the tail bracing. So onto the tail bracing, everybody's favorite part. Got to grab uh, the little baggie full of all the tail bracing stuff, the wires and the bolts. So quick overview of what's going on here. Uh, obviously you got the wires, you got four wires, some more barrel crimpers, little uh, pre-bent um, tabs, and then the, the screws and the, the little polyurethane lock nuts that hold the tabs on. And then you got your uh, clevis kind of turnbuckle assembly. These come apart out of the bag or in the bag. So you got to put them together. You got the brass part, you just put a jam nut on it, screw it into the clevis, and then you got your fuel tubing on the clevis kind of ready to go. So we put all these together ahead of time. First step, we got to install these tabs. So we want the screw going through this way. So you know, what would be the top? Okay, so let's put a tab on here. And I'm already doing it wrong. <laughs> there we go. So you want the tab kind of facing that way. So just pop it up. I had to clean out those holes, by the way. Um, just run a little round file through it. And then you got another tab on the top. Get your little polyurethane lock nut. No Loctite needed. All right, so we got all the tabs in. They're, they're snug, they're not tight. So they're just tight enough to where, you know, it holds it and I can still move the tabs to align the wires. So that's kind of how you want it. You don't want them squeezing the balsa and potentially ripping the covering. Looking good. All right, let's hook up the bracing itself. Wire time. So we're gonna start with this bar here. So you're gonna put one of these crimpers on. I'm gonna go through the bottom. Remember, the plane's upside down. Slide it through the other side of the barrel. Okay. 
Okay, so that end's done. Now, we're actually gonna attach the clevis. So we gotta open these up. These are kinda hard to do with just your hands, so you grab a little flat blade screwdriver. You can kinda open it up, get it on there and pull the screwdriver out. All right, so we're not gonna clip it or anything yet. Uh, we just want it there for a rough estimate. So we got our barrel crimper on there. Oop, don't slide off. Run it through your turnbuckle. Take up all your slack. Make sure that's good. And then we're gonna slide the rest of it through the barrel connector. Get that down. So you can see it's still loose, but that's what the point of that turnbuckle is. Okay, there you go. So now we're gonna undo that clevis again with our screwdriver. And we're gonna tighten it in. So let's see, we want, you can kind of get an estimate here of how it's gonna be. So you pull it tight. Now you don't want it pulling on this stabilizer. Let's try that. So let's clip that, see how that feels. It probably can stand to get tightened up just a little bit more. All right, let's do the rest. All right, so we have both uh, flying wires on the bottom of the aircraft. Let's flip it over. Like I said, we just kind of got to do a little bit of finalizing, but we want to get them all on first before we do the final tension. So let's flip the plane over. And I've got these tabs kind of pointed right at each other, so you can kind of eyeball it and just make sure they're pointing at each other. They're not, one's not going, you know, off that way. And, and then the, the angle that they're bent at, they're, you know, kind of meeting up. That'll help with your wires. Last side, guys. Same process. So we got them all on. Let's start kind of tensioning these up, getting them to where we want it without, you know, twisting the surfaces. So, all right, so we got this one all tightened up. Let's get the pin and everything set. We're gonna put a little drop of Loctite on that. But you can see it's nice and straight and it's got a little play in it. So you don't want it tight to where it's pulling on the surfaces. It's just in forward or in flight, you know, this will stabilize the surfaces if you're, you know, doing a lot of aerobatics. <laughs> Teeny little drop of Loctite. This stuff likes to go everywhere. It's just for the jam nut to spin the jam nut down. Just give it a little, there we go. Fuel tubing. Get over the two little nubs that hold it. All right, nice and secure. There we go. Done. Let's do uh, the other three. Okay, so we got these two even. You can see there's just barely any tension on them. So it's not enough to change the shape of the fins. Cool. Same thing with the jam nut. Finish up the bottom. <laughs> Plane is back upside down so we can finalize the bottom. Remember we just put these kind of on, did a rough install. So let's uh, make sure all our cables are where we want them. Looks like this one needs one more turn in. There we go, that's the one. Same thing with the jam nut, let's make a little room. Get that fuel tubing over. Same process. Based on the other ones, it's gonna need about two turns, so we'll, we'll check one. All right, clevis is clipped in on the bottom. Same thing, fuel tubing. All right, everybody, so here's the plane for the first time on, the, on its tail wheel. Things coming together, looking amazing. What a cool plane.
And check this tail wheel out with the leaf springs, Mary. So you can see it's got some really good suspension. Really cool. All right, everybody, so that's gonna do it for X-Cub part four. Uh, we got all the radio equipment in and uh, it's pretty much ready to go uh, on the back of the airplane wise. Everything's good. We got the channels all set up. Next video, part five, I think it just goes right into the engine. So we're gonna hook up the engine and uh, get all that going. Fuel tank, throttle servo, that's gonna be a lot of fun. If you got any questions, just like always, ask us in the comment section. Thanks everyone.